Okay, so unless you've been living under a rock for the past couple of months, you would know that Debian 6 Squeeze has finally gone stable, and here we are at the final Debian release of Debian 6.0. So we're running, instead of the standard GNOME install, which I'm assuming everybody else is going to cover, I've chosen the XFCE version, as I haven't done a video on the XFCE desktop yet. So here we are at the login, so I'm just going to log in now. Now I've got this fully installed, um, it's running like an absolute beast at the moment because I've given it one and a half gig of RAM and uh, plenty of uh, video card RAM and of course it's only XFCE so it doesn't actually take that long to load at all. Now the nice thing about XFCE is that it comes up on boot up with startup tips which is pretty helpful actually, it harkens over to KDE where nearly every application you open has a startup tip to it. So obviously it says you can delete multiple files, blah, 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 we'll be, but we already know how to do that. So you can go next and you can just keep filing through startup tips if you have time. Okay, so here we are at Debian 6. Now, first comment, nice wallpaper. So as it is Debian and as it is XFCE, you're going to look for a very vanilla install here. You don't have a lot of customization. Debian is more a base system, it's more a package management system that is solid and it's stable. I would not expect to see many, if any, crashes in running under Debian 6. The reason being is because the software is not cutting edge by any stretch of the imagination. It is not antiquated software, but it is software from about the Ubuntu 10.04 era. So it's about, I'd, I think they froze solid around the beginning of 2010. So the kernel version is 2.6.32 and obviously we're up to 2.6.37 stable.38 uh, testing. So this time we're pulling straight from Debian stable instead of Debian testing. Okay, so XFCE. Now, I will probably find a better distribution to do a demo of XFC as XFC 4.8 came out not that long ago and they brought a whole wagon load of improvements that uh, would be worth covering. But for the moment, let's just talk about this version of XFC, which is 4.6.2. So we're up to 4.8 now and here we have 4.6. Okay, so let's talk about just quickly the package management. As most people know, Debian is apt-based. Now we all know this because of course Ubuntu customized Debian way back in 2004 and it's become the most popular Linux distribution ever since. So you are all familiar I'm sure with apt-getting. Anytime you want to install a command you go straight to the terminal is probably the easiest way and simply su your way up to super user if you have not installed sudo by default and then just simply apt dash get install whatever you want to do say gimp or something like that so let's have a look through the default applications now as I've said before these applications are not going to be anywhere near the cutting edge it's stable software this is software that you would expect to put on mission critical systems that you don't need the latest cutting edge you just want something that will hold up to intense workloads not even think about crashing so under accessories we have application finder bulk rename clipman mousepad now a lot of these are xfce tools so i'm going to cover these in short time so bulk rename does exactly what you, what it says it does all you do is you add files then you add the tags and the file names to them and click the rename files and away it goes Clipman, this is a clipboard manager, as you can see down here on the taskbar, every time you copy paste something, it will place it in that clipboard. So for instance, if I go copy this one and paste it somewhere else, if you have a look under the clipboard, it says that there's a file there that I've clipped to the clipboard. So pretty handy little tool. We've got Mousepad, which is the default text editor. We've got Notes, which is similar to Tomboy Notes, but again, it's a lot more lightweight and it's geared toward the XFCE environment. We've also got a root terminal. We've got Take a Screenshot. We've got Sensor Viewer, which is something that will sense your system and be able to give you information about like the temperature of your system, etc. Now, it's not gonna work on VirtualBox because I don't have a system temperature, etc. And here we have Squeeze. Now, don't get this confused with Debian Squeeze, 
This is simply a file archiver that comes with XFCE, so don't be confused as to what that is. That is simply an archiver like File Roller or like the X Archiver, etc. We have another terminal. We have the Thunar File Manager, which of course is the default file manager for XFCE. Very lightweight, similar to PC Man FM. I think PC Man FM is slightly lighter, but it may not have as many features at, as what XFCE does. You can see it's very similar in layout to PC Man FM. Uh, they've got a lot to gain on top of Nautilus as far as speed goes. So I won't spend too much time on Thunar because, let's face it, it's a file browser. If it works, that's all that matters. We've also got the print dialog and the print manager, which you guys have probably seen before, and the XFCE task manager. Now, we've probably, now we I know we saw this a while back and a lot of LXDE distros. Before LXDE had its own system monitor, they used to use the XFCE task manager a lot. Now here you can see memory usage. I'm only using 74 meg of one and a half gigs. That is extremely impressive. Apart from Puppy Linux, I don't think there's a distribution that you can use that uses under 74 meg. So extremely lightweight distribution. If you, if you, Even if you had a machine with 256 meg of RAM, I think you would be able to run this. As long as you gave it a decent swap file, you would be able to run Debian 6. So that is an extremely impressive achievement and it's a real milestone as far as dispelling rumors of kernel bloat, etc. If you can run a system with less than 256 meg of RAM in 2011, you are doing extremely well. Restretto, which is the image viewer. Very simple, you just click here and you open your images. Now I don't have any images here, so that's a bit of a bummer, but that doesn't really matter. It's an image viewer much like any other. Again, if you want more advanced applications, you would want to look into apt-get. Now, the other thing is, they do not provide you with a graphical package manager. You have to install that on your own. But Xane Image Scanning Program, we've seen that before. Multimedia, Xfalso, and this is a tag editor. So what you can do is you can get all your different songs and then you can write tags and write values to them so that then and save those tags to the actual file and embed that metadata into the file. So then whatever program you're using to import the songs, they have their metadata already pre-configured. Very nice, very handy. We've got Mixer, which is the XFCE4 Mixer. And you can see here that the sound card is already pre-selected. And it says there are no controls visible because I don't actually have a real sound card on this virtual box, do I? We've got Quab Libet, which actually looks a lot like Aquilo but it's actually just a lightweight music player that can sit in the background and go through a playlist of songs. It's very simple. The applications that come with Debian are not supposed to be the be-all and end-all of applications. Debian is supposed to provide a stable base to then build a distribution that suits your workflow on top of. We've got VLC Media Player, which I'm glad they've included this, as we all know that XFCE is the best media player around. Okay, the GUI sucks. But I'm sure with a bit of theming, you can actually get that looking quite nice. And XF Burn, which I have covered before, and it's alerting me that there's no burners currently available. Again, I'm on VirtualBox. But XF Burn, I've covered before. It's a wonderful application. It's lightweight. It's the default in a lot of lightweight distributions, including LXDE spins, etc. The same CD that gives you the XFCE version of Debian does give you the LXDE version as well. If you would like me to do a video on the LXDE version of Debian 6, then let me know in the comments below. But as I've already done a, a video on the LXDE desktop environment, I thought I'd do one on, a, on XFCE. Okay, under network we have Ice Weasel, which is practically a rebranded Firefox um, as a completely open source alternative. Um, they remove the Mozilla uh, brand from it and they customize it slightly just to keep it under the GPL as far as legality is concerned. And of course you have the Network Manager. Now the Network Manager I think is an XFC default. Um, it's very easy to understand surprisingly. There are some Network Managers which, which can be very difficult to grasp. But basically you've got your different connections here which would show up with your wireless etc and you just say connect or disconnect and then it has and then it gives you your preferences here such as web pass passcodes etc that's easy to grasp i won't spend too much time on it and under office we have dictionary epdf viewer and openoffice.org now i'm not going to even talk about libreoffice in this one because this is supposed to be mission critical stable software and everybody knows that openoffice is just that 
Now, interestingly enough, it would actually appear that we can't open any of the... Interestingly enough, it appears we can't actually open any of the OpenOffice.org applications because they're not fully installed. Now, this is due to the fact that when I installed this Debian 6 system, I wasn't connected to the internet, I was just installing off the CD. So you probably had to go out to the net and fetch more files for that. But we all know how OpenOffice.org works, and we're running 3.2.1, so it's not quite the latest at all. It's again around the Ubuntu Lucid period. And under systems we have bulk rename again, login window, new login, new login in a window, reporter bug which is nice, not that I don't think you're going to come across that many, terminal, cleanup file manager again and the task manager again. Now under settings, XFCE is actually surprisingly configurable. You would think that it's kind of locked down a bit like LXDE is for the sake of keeping everything lightweight, but it's actually surprisingly configurable. Under the settings manager of XFCE, you have a lot of choices here. It looks a lot like the GNOME control panel in all actuality. You can change the appearance of your desktop, such as backgrounds and style. So we're going to leave the style as the default, but you can see there's a lot of different styles here that you can choose, and there's a lot of different icons, so we'll just leave it at XFCE for the moment. And the, and the default icon theme is, of course, Tango, the most well-used and well-loved icon sets in Linux history. And, of course, fonts is normal sans fonts. It's extremely vanilla. I can't stress how not boring XFCE is, because it's not boring. But for customization abilities, it's fine. But by default, it is going to look pretty old school. No fancy elementary theming or fans or icon sets here. Not to say that you can't install them, might I add. Okay, calendar. We've got a calendar application, which is settings for what sits down here in your system tray. We've got the desktop, which you can configure the desktop background and the icon behavior. And you can see here they've actually got quite a few different wallpapers. Some of them are better quality, some of them are better quality than others. And there are a lot of XFC ones in there as well. Now, I get the feeling that XFC tries to be a very minimalist distro. It doesn't try to get in. I get the feeling that XFC tries to be a very minimalist desktop environment. It doesn't try to get in your face with fancy bling, it just provides you with a fast system that you can customize if you so wish. Also got things such as the display manager, file manager, login window, mouse, notifications, the XFCE panel which has under, undergone a major rework in the latest version of XFCE. Uh, we have the preferred applications, removable drives and media, session and startup, settings editor which is like the gconf uh, settings editor. Window Manager, Window Manager Tweaks, which is pretty helpful indeed. Interestingly enough, you can enable display compositing, which makes everything look a tiny bit clearer. It does slow the system down ever so slightly. If we go, if we have a look quickly under the Task Manager, you'll see that the RAM usage is still is slightly higher. It's only about 10 meg higher, but it's just slightly higher quality graphics that way. And of course, back under Settings, you can configure your workspaces, which it has four by default and then the same calendar settings, power manager settings, and print system settings. Now power management settings are interesting as it doesn't, LXD distros don't exactly have this customization when it comes to power management. They have slightly more basic options unless the distro opts to install the XFC power manager by default. Um, this is just as configurable as the one that comes with GNOME. So in all honesty, if you've got an older machine that you still want to have the customization abilities that GNOME and GTK offer, then I would suggest that you look for a good XFC distro. Would I recommend Debian? As a regular desktop user, probably not. The packages are a bit old, and that's only due to the fact that they are tested as they are stable. These applications are for these applications are solid as a rock, as they have been tested repeatedly over the over the last couple of years since Debian 5 Lenny went stable. So Debian 6 is an extremely stable system. If, if you want something that is not going to crash on you, if you want something that you want to run on a server and never have to look at upgrading, then this is the one for you. You can of course do Debian testing, which is a basically a rolling release until that testing goes stable. So really it's an evolution of an operating system and it's good to see that Debian is keeping on going with what it does best. Some distros are opting towards some more recent packages and they do sacrifice a bit of stability as a result. 
but Debian will keep on providing a stable base for any mission critical platform. And on the XFCE side, if you've got an old machine, but you still want to have the customization of XFCE and GTK, if you still want to have the customization of GNOME and GTK, then XFCE is for you. It's still compatible with all your GNOME themes and your icon set, but it's just not as heavy as normal GNOME. If you do have some extra grunt in your system, however, you can of course install things like Compiz and get your fancy desktop bling. But in all reality, XFCE and Debian provide a very lightweight and stable system. If you have an old machine, I would recommend that you give Debian a try. If you don't want to be up to the date with the absolute latest packages, Debian 6 is a good idea. It's hard to argue with less than 100 meg of RAM usage by default, certainly a lot less than what Ubuntu uses nowadays, and of course the KDE distributions we won't even go near. All in all, Debian 6 is final. It's stable, it's released, you can go get it from the Debian.org site, and of course there are a host of uh, torrents which I downloaded this one from. Alright, coming up, coming up at some stage in the future, I'm going to be looking at Salix OS, which is going to be the Fluxbox version, as I haven't covered a Fluxbox distro yet. What I'm trying to do with these distributions is try to give a wide range of view as far as desktop environments goes. So I've done a few videos on KDE, I've done some videos on GNOME, let me know if there's any desktop environments that I haven't done yet. I've done one on E17. And as there are a few distros coming out in the near future, we'll be looking at those as well. But I thought I'd better give Debian 6 a go. I'm very impressed with it. It's almost like the power of Ubuntu and the back end that keeps Ubuntu solid, as well as a super lightweight desktop environment. It's fast, it's stable, it's Debian. What more can I say?